In the recent Halo Infinite development update, it was focused on the PC, but it actually had a lot of multiplayer information within it. So in this video, we're going to focus strictly on the multiplayer side of things for Halo Infinite. We're talking input-based matchmaking, cross-play, cross-progression, and Halo 5's true skill coming in as well. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So this recent Inside Infinite development update is probably one of the better ones we've received. Had a lot of really good information, it's concise and to the point, has some really awesome screenshots. And I thought we we're gonna focus strictly on the PC side of things like features and different kind of things like that. But we got a lot of good information about the multiplayer side, which I know a lot of people out here care about. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about all the new multiplayer information from this development update. We're gonna be breaking this development up and down in multiple videos, guys, because there's a lot of really good stuff in here. So if you'd like these kind of news and informational videos, I wanna stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, I'll make sure you tap subscribe. Let's get right into the content here. So this first section, we're going to be talking about the new invite system and land support, true land support, it looks like for Halo Infinite. This new invite system allows you to have out of game invites that put you into Halo Infinite with Xbox Live, Steam and Discord integrations with Halo Infinite. This is just making it easier for people to jump into the game and play. Many people utilize Discord, especially when it comes to just hanging out, chilling with their friends online, or just keeping up with everyone that they know. How easy would it be just like, hey, let's all play Infinite, click within Discord, you're playing Infinite right from there. It just makes it so much easier, much more at just like your fingertips. Halo Infinite is always ready for you to play. A really big thing here is local multiplayer servers. So talking about here saying, we actually allow you to host a local multiplayer server on your PC. Other players in your local area network or LAN, both PC and Xbox are able to join to your local server and play infinite multiplayer with you. We also have both ranked and unranked matchmaking playlists where PC and Xbox can play together. I'm just hoping this is true LAN support, not just kind of like the LAN support that we got for like Halo 5 and MCC, which still require you to log into Xbox Live to be able to get onto your local area network. But it's still land, yes, but it becomes a big issue, especially with tournaments. Because with tournaments, we had this actually in the Anaheim event, the last event that I went to, we were standing around for like two or three hours waiting for Xbox Live to go back online so they can finish the tournament because they had to sign into their Xbox Live accounts that they had, that they had set up for the event be able to finish. We cannot have these huge delays anymore. If you really want the HDS side of things to really grow and expand, this happens so often with Xbox servers going down, especially with MCC events and also with Halo 5. So if it's true LAN support where you don't need to be online to play, then that's a really good option. And yes, they confirmed here that unranked and ranked cross play for PC and Xbox will be available for you guys to jump in and around and have some fun with. Of course, talking about cross play brings up the issue of controller versus mouse and keyboard. This has been a major issue when it comes to MCC on PC and 343 recognizes this and they kind of divided up the player base for Halo Infinite in a specific way where you can hopefully even out the balancing issues with this. They stated here specifically saying, social playlists and custom matches are open to all. You can play on any platform and any device with anyone you like. For ranked matches, we plan to restrict competitive playlists based on input type, not console versus PC. That's because we believe input is the biggest differentiator in gameplay ability with things like aim assist on the controller or precision of sniping with the mouse you can play with a controller on pc you play ranked with your console friends or even play mouse and keyboard on console with your pc friends this does seem to be a bit of a drag because you imagine that i'm sure there's some people out there who play only on pc and only mouse and keyboard right you want to play ranked well you'll only be matching against your other fellow keyboard and mouse players. So I think there will always be like, especially within the community itself, there'll be a bit of an issue like, oh, you're a controller 50 or you're a mouse and keyboard 50 instead of having to be like a true 50 player, like a top rank kind of player. But the thing is that you want to have, and you need to have aim assist when it comes to controller because your movements and ability to aim is way less than it is on a mouse and keyboard. But on the other hand, mouse and keyboard has such precision, you can't give them aim assist or any kind of extra bullet magnetism because the precision would be way too overpowered. But you don't want to change those inputs too much because you lose the sense of what it feels like to play with those because Halo has a very specific feel. And if you mess with that at all, it doesn't really feel like Halo anymore. Though I am glad that social is just open to everybody to play. I think that's the right way to do it for ranks. 
Especially, especially when it comes to the higher end level gameplay, when it comes to ranks, that's where you really start seeing the keyboard and mouse versus the controller input differences. Like even right now in MCC, you can do just fine on mouse and keyboard and social. But if you're trying to squeeze out every advantage you can and like you can at those high level rank matches, dividing up the player base when it comes to P mouse and keyboard versus controller is kind of the right way to go about this. Talking about input devices and some other features with PC and just Halo Infinite in general, it talked about latency. This was actually a pretty big issue when it comes to console play, especially when Halo 5 with the heavy aim that people have really experienced with that game. And 343 was never really able to patch it properly. Like they definitely fixed the majority of it, but it's still a lingering issue within Halo 5 and really just the Xbox One family of consoles in general. So they talk about having really low input latency right here saying our competitively low input latency and cross-platform LAN server is really cool. With Halo being such a fast, precise shooter, you need to have very, very low latency. And it looks like what 343 is doing is trying to get right up there with some of the other top end shooters, maybe something like a Valorant or CSGO, or maybe even a Call of Duty. I don't know what the really the latencies are, but really high end competitive players do recognize the latency when it comes to playing on consoles or playing on PC, you'll definitely have a benefit there. And the reason why they say competitively low input latency rather than no input latency, because no matter what you do, there will be some latency. There is going to be a little bit of a delay between your stick movement and your action within the game. Because that's just like the speed of light. There's a limitation. It has to travel to that location. Even though it feels instantaneous, you slow it down super, super slow, like the speed of light slow, you will see the distance of that signal traveling through space and time. So there is always going to be input latency, but just how low is it going to be? We'll have to wait and see. Talking about competitive gameplay, right? A uh, big thing that happened with Halo 5 about halfway through its life cycle was they changed up the matchmaking system to have a more fair and balanced gameplay experience. And what 343 did with Halo 5 is they implemented True Skill 2. This is what is called your MMR, your matchmaking rank, as you probably heard if you played Halo 5 enough. This is basically your rank within that day or how you're performing in within that time frame. This is not the ranking system. That's something completely different. There's two systems. There's ranking system and there's the MMR system. This time we're talking about the MMR system and it's coming back in Halo Infinite. Stayed in here saying, we also want to ensure nobody feels like they're at a significant disadvantage because of the way they're playing within reason. A 10 year old PC isn't just going to be as fast as a brand new ultra high end PC. If we do our job right, in combination with our true skill to ranking system, everyone should be able to trust they're getting a fair shake in crossplay ecosystem. So just to clarify, this is not the ranking system like one through 50 or bronze through champion like we had in Halo 5. This is your matchmaking ranking here. So this is one thing I'm actually kind of really worried about when it comes to Halo Infinite is the matchmaking system. The game can be fantastic and a lot of fun, but if the matchmaking is like too sweaty or too fair in their eyes, then it, it just won't really be that fun of a social experience. This is the issue that Call of Duty franchise has been really having, especially in the last couple years, where I think actually like Call of Duty Black Cold War, the reason why I came out is one of the best Call of Duties ever released. Problem is with the multiplayer, the matchmaking system is so strict that it puts you in really high latency lobbies against really sweaty players. And it's like, I'm matching against, like I'm a casual Call of Duty player and I'm matching against guys who are like a quick scope diamond camo gods and people rocking like their optic camo freaking weapons and like their CDL skins and stuff like that, sweating and sliding all over the place. It's just not the same Call of Duty experience that I'm looking for for my social experience. But I'm really hoping with Halo Infinite, they don't go that route with Call of Duty, even it might say it might boost the player retention because it kind of caters to more new players, keeping all the high skill players in their one bracket and all the new players in their other bracket and not really mixing the two together like we've had traditionally. Now my experience with True Skill 2 for Halo 5 for social matches, it's been rather fair. It hasn't been too sweaty, but it definitely feels like I'm not matching against people who've just opened the game up for the first time. This is something we're gonna have to keep an eye on and keep very close on see what uh, 343 is gonna do because we're gonna have to make our voice heard when it comes to how we want our matchmaking experience to be within multiplayer. And talking about sweaty games, we're actually talking about HCS, the proper amount of sweat right here, where previously they did mention that they announced that they locked down the event for the 2021 Halo Infinite event which is super exciting. I'm hoping it's nearby me. I would love to go to events. I love going to events to get a chance to see all you guys out there, meet members of the community as well. It's one of those places where like everyone who loves Halo kind of gets together and meets up. It's more than just like watching pros play. It's a social experience as well. And in this development update for the HCS side of things, they said, 
Today, we're excited to say the venue for the Halo World Championship is now secured. That's from the head of HCS, Tashi. Now, they do say things are subject to change, obviously, because with the pandemic and things going on, you can't really have people getting together. But I'm assuming this is probably more of a fall event. This Halo HCS World event thing might be like towards the end of 2022. But we do have an event scheduled for 2021, most likely in the fall, which I would be crazy excited about if I can make it I will 100% be there my first ever Halo event I went to was actually the 2018 Worlds and that was just so much fun to watch oh my god so many great plays and it was a great chance to meet a lot of people I've met online play some games with it was just fantastic but yeah I'm really excited to see what Tashi and the HCS crew is able to pull off for Halo Infinite they have really high hopes for this game I really want to see the competitive side of things come back and have people get really interested with HCS Halo Infinite. So if you guys like these news and informational videos or been out of the loop for Halo for the last few days or so, check out the videos on the screen right here. I'll get linked to all my news and informational videos right there. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.